guys how's it going it's al week three we've got the cage match the head-to-head -head battle if you do not know what this video is let me explain very quickly if you play head-to-head -head games on DraftKings, you can pick players and your opponents can as well what we do on this show is i bring on a guest this week i've got the ff hitman from the fantasy footballers is here with me today and we're going to draft head-to-head -head lineups against one another utilizing the salary cap on DraftKings. but the trick is if i take somebody he can't have him so this is a bit of a different way to try to build head-to-heads. It takes a little bit more time, but it's a whole lot of fun. So if you want to do a cage match with one of your friends, go ahead. We do one every single Wednesday on the channel. So let's go. He's a legend. Mike, welcome back to the show. Glad to have you. I wasn't sure if there was supposed to be music going, so I was pretending to dance. <laughs> no, the music's in the background. You won't hear it. Okay. I hear it. It's in my monitors. But yeah. We're Gosh, playing share for... the music, man. Come I'm on. sorry, I can't. I can't. Zoom won't let me. It will. <laughs> you got to get your tech people on that. I got to have tech people to get people on it. <laughs> We're going to play for $100 today. Uh, you've given me the number one pick. Then you get second and two. Then we go one, 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 one the rest of the way. Uh, are we going big day for are we you. Going two fifty. I thought we said. 250. Oh, we're going two fifty. Two hundred fifty dollars. My fault. Yeah. I'm so used to saying a hundred dollars on these. Chat is immediately I'll... reminding me. He said two fifty. <laughs> I'll go 100, you go 250. Oh, see, I don't like this already. This is terrible. See, that would add up to tree fitty, which is always a good number to start. About with. tree fitty. About tree fitty. Wearing one of your uh, <laughs> Phoenix Suns hats. Big day for the Phoenix Suns. Oh, uh, big day, baby. Yeah, the footballers uh, are probably going to end up buying the Phoenix Suns, so that's a good thing for you guys as well. You get that owner's box. You get all the perks. You get to hang out with Chris Paul and everybody else. I hear good things about basketball ownership yeah good things yeah basketball owners boxes are pretty great you get that dessert tray that they bring around to the to the you know to the lux boxes at all times oh the special dessert tray has it got pudding it's got everything like tapioca pudding chocolate pudding oh. any like butterscotch whatever you need okay all, all right. right so why don't we go right into it i have the first pick because this is not a week where there is a ton of uh value up front Right, there's not a ton of value up front. First of all, join the listener league. Uh, get in there early, smizzle.tv slash links. Let me tell you about the two charities that we're playing for. Mike is going to be playing uh, for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. The fantasy footballer is very involved in raising money for St. Jude's all the time. There'll be a link down below in the description if you wanted to donate money to Mike's charity. If you think Mike's team's going to win after the end of this, make sure that you drop a small donation on uh, St. Jude's or a large donation. That would also work. And we on the channel are raising money for No Kid Hungry, just like we have for the last couple of years. We are trying to raise $50,000 as a community. I will match uh, every $10,000 that the community raises up to $50,000. No Kid Hungry. I heard you're in for 10 k already. They already hit the first one. We're two weeks in. We're rolling. Uh, Let's bankrupt him, fellas. Yeah, look, make me get, make this hurt, okay? <laughs> make this hurt. Give money to the kids. Uh, no Kid Hungry, trying to raise money uh, to provide school breakfasts and lunches to food insecure kids across America. Uh, so be a part of something bigger than yourself. And uh, let me get to my pick, and then I'll bring in Mike's pick. I'm going to start at running back this week. I'm, I was really glad to hear you elaborating on what the first pick, because that, that's why I bypassed, because mm -hmm. I didn't know that there was a for sure slam dunk. That's the value. That's the upside that I wanted to go with. There, there's not. Like, that's the thing. Like, there's guys that are good. But typically speaking, if I get the first pick overall, I want to take, like, that lock-in 3K to 4K guy who's – just going to run 40 routes on the day and get seven, eight targets and is a surefire thing. But that's not there. So I got to find somebody at running back. And the guy that I wanted to focus on, I know that like nobody likes this, but I like it. And it's David Montgomery this week. Ran for oh, 122. A What's that's that? A great pick. That, that's you. a fantastic pick this week. He's 5,900, ran for 122 against Green Bay, and now squares off against Houston, who has looked good in their first two games defensively. But, like, since the beginning of last year, they've allowed, like, one of the highest yards before first contact to opposing running backs. That is one thing that stayed constant through the first two weeks of this season. You know what David Montgomery is really good at? Evading tackles and breaking tackles. So if you let him get ahead of steam and have some space getting into your second level – uh, he could have an absolutely monstrous day. I believe last week he ran for like over eight yards. A carry uh, is going to get all the inside the five carries. The Bears are going to try and establish the hell out of it every single week. And he does have some involvement in the passing game. So as much as I thought Khalil Herbert might be a zero RB candidate, a good one at that, uh, Montgomery's still getting tons of usage with uh, the new regime in Chicago. So he's my number one pick. I'm starting there. 
I'll take the value and slide it over to you for two picks and then back to me for one. Yeah, I dig it. David Montgomery played fantastic. Khalil Herbert looked good in he that has game looked as good. well. Yeah. I mean, he uh, yeah, he's a good player, but I'm saying I think that maybe the Packers are just extra bad against the run. Mm-hmm. So that that's going to be something for fantasy players to watch mm-hmm. out for that they could be uh, just another another run funnel situation. I'm with you. I'm with you. All right. So you got David Montgomery. I got Demont. All right, I'm going to move on over to the wide receiver position. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it's it's every week now the, for this particular player. I mean, I don't know how you don't look at him as like a top five <laughs> dynasty wide receiver now. The doubt is completely gone. The targets are always there. I will take the sun god. I'll take Ooh. Amon Ross, St. Brown against Minnesota. I think they have uh, – I think it's like the second highest over-under of the week currently if if i'm not mistaken they're up there i don't like i don't quote me but like i've got them at 53 and now it may have moved for the total in that game but like there i talk about having fantasy carnivals right like a team that's good enough offensively or really good offensively but does not have a defense that can keep opponents from scoring uh do we have to move the lions into fantasy carnival territory uh, maybe maybe man there jared goff looks more than competent and uh, and the the lines are there's a lot of weapons on there, man. It's it's very interesting, and they're going to get better theoretically once Jamison Williams can mm-hmm, play. But mm-hmm. but the the all the talk of off of last year of Amon Ra just taking advantage of the situation that's that's toast. That's burnt up by the rays of the sun god. And that guy <laughs> is just he's an absolute monster. And at 7,200, I imagine by the end of this week his price will go up yet again. Mm-hmm. So I'll take it for 7,200 while I can, and. So now for my for my next, I get two right. You get two right here. All right, uh, I will go with budget Jamar Chase, aka T Higgins, mm-hmm. is sitting at sixty one hundred, and the targets are basically divvied up fifty fifty between the two of them. But the price difference is very large. Mm-hmm. Yes, Jamar Chase is the better player, but T Higgins is pretty freaking good himself. Come, bounce, big bounce back after the concussion, got the touchdown this past week. Let's see if uh, ho- and hopefully. The Bengals O line can protect from the Jets. I think they can. <laughs> it's it's a man. I mean, the pitch of your voice has to go up into I think that they can. And T. Higgins should eat. So we have a very weird situation in this game with the Jets and Cincinnati. We have the movable force uh being the Cincinnati offensive line versus the resistible object in the Jets pass rush, which is non-existent. So which one is going to win, or are they just going to non-block and (laughs) non-rush each other for like 60 minutes? Hey, that's perfectly fine, because then T. Higgins will catch probably seven passes. So I have just a a little bit of a spoiler alert. Thursday's My Best Buys article comes out on ESPN+. T. Higgins is in Best Buys, and uh, we dug up a very interesting stat. Since week 12 of last season, T. Higgins is averaging more catches than Jamar Chase for more yards than Jamar Chase on a higher catch rate. There you go. Chase has ended up in the end zone more often. So, like, he gets all the shine. And for good reason, he's amazing. But, like, it's not like T. Higgins uh, has not been extremely good. I like that pick. Obviously, 6,100 is a solid play there. So, I'm going to gamble, okay? I'm going to gamble just a little bit here. Mm. No, I don't want to do that. I I was going to do a thing, and I just talked myself out of it. Coward. Yes. (laughs) It's too hard. This game is not easy Uh, because I got to think about what you want, what you need, and what you can't have. Based on what you spent, I might be higher than the field on one of these guys. I'm going to take the other one, though. I'm going to go with Dalvin Cook. So sticking with the five-box running back philosophy here, Dalvin Cook has done very well uh, against Detroit. So now we've got kind of this heads-up, back-and-forth situation with my yep. Dalvin Cook against your Amon Ross St. Brown. Uh, I like the usage Dalvin Cook has got. I'm throwing out week two against uh, Philadelphia. Agreed. It's clear that Kirk Cousins does not operate well. It's the Morty Seinfeld thing. If you have a meeting after five o'clock for a senior citizen, they're not going to show out very well. So, like, he'd rather be in bed under a duvet uh, sipping on a cup of chamomile than he would like to be on national TV on an island game. Hitting him with all the fancy words. So in, in all those situations, he grabs it from his boudoir. Yeah. <laughs> Takes it right out of the armoire. <laughs> I'm going to take Dalvin Cook at 7,900. He's uh, of the top five priced running backs on the week. He is the cheapest and also has the best matchup uh, and has a similar ceiling and projection to everybody else. I'll take the double five box running back to start here. 
uh, at home, favored, uh, 20 opportunity expectation involved in the passing game and all the inside the five carries. So hopefully my running backs can carry this team. I'm going to have to cobble it together at wide receiver. Dalvin Cook was in play for me. It was like it was for my big budget player. Mm -hmm. So you have taken that away. So I'm going to lock in my third wide receiver. I will take uh, Mr. Three Tutty no! from, <laughs> from just a few days ago. Damn it! I will take Stephon Diggs for 7,700. I was gambling you weren't going to take him. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would have taken Dalvin Cook had you not taken him. Okay. So, so we had the we had the same thought process, mm -hmm. at least. Oh, so, I mean, like, Gabe Davis, heal up. Heal up, brother. Please. I mean, you know, I mean, take uh, maybe a week off. Another week? <laughs> yeah. Be really ready to go. So, like, that leaves Jake Kumaro on the outside. Yeah. Wait, I mean, yeah, get Kumaro some reps. That guy deserves it. He's been in the league long enough. Let Isaiah McKenzie run some wind sprints. <laughs> well, him and splitting with Crowder. That is, that is nonsense. Just a bad fantasy situation. Like, there's yes, no winners good. there. So, like, I was drafting Crowder when they signed him uh, in best ball over the summer at, like, 150 sure. a lot. Yep, yep. And then he did not play at the beginning of camp. And then he flip-flopped spots with McKenzie where McKenzie moved up to, like, 150. And he moved down to 190. And neither of them is a win. L's abound in the slot so far. For the Buffalo Bills. Oh, I hate that you took Stephon Diggs. I'm I'm pretty happy with the uh, the amount of targets that those three wideouts should get. Yeah, I think you're I think you're all right in that situation. I think you'll be good there. Uh, zero running back start for you. Robust running back start for me, which now leaves me in a difficult <laughs> situation because and during I, this season, the mm -hmm. uh, the the zero running backers versus the robust people, the robust running backers, we are getting our heinies a whipped. <laughs> by the zero rb community right now i mean look i'm a uh i'm neither of those i'm neither a zero running back guy nor am i a robust running back guy when it comes to drafting i am a uh bell cow and chill drafter yeah they, they, the hero yeah i'll back. take a guy in the first two rounds and then i'm gonna wait until like after the dead zone mm -hmm. uh and take a guy yeah. like i i ended up on a ton of fournette a ton of barkley uh i ended up with a lot of ezekiel elliott which now looks unfortunate because of Dak, but like I was very happy with the amount of Ezekiel Elliott that I was getting. Yeah, I in our league of record, which is all it's all over mm -hmm. the place because there's keepers and you can trade your draft, draft picks and things. I had to make the Zeke versus Fournette choice, mm -hmm. and I went Zeke, and it feels really bad right now. <laughs> really, <laughs> yeah, really bad. God, I mean, it could have been so good. It's it's unfortunate the injuries around guys like uh, Fournette is somebody that I'm extremely happy about too. However, with all of the issues, because like they're not just injuries, they're injuries and now a suspension uh, with the right. Tampa Bay wide receivers, <laughs> like Leonard yeah. Fournette's not looking as good as he was before because like they might have, they just may not be able to move the ball as well as they could previously. So I think there's a route that I can go here. And I think that it's interesting and you're forcing me into a thing. But if you're going to force me into a thing, I'm happy to be forced into Cooper Cup. Oh, yeah. What? If you're so gonna you're paint going... me into a corner, paint me into the Cooper corner. Yeah, I mean, against uh, Arizona, that is a wise decision. Yeah. So Arizona blitzes a ton, right? Well, we call it that. They, they okay. Yeah. So like they call a blitz a lot. Yeah. Yeah. We try. So like the last season and a half, when Stafford is blitzed, Cooper Cup has 45 receptions. Uh, I think Arizona blitz is like top. Are they number one or like top three? Oh, uh, I've. They're very I, I high. I don't even know. They, yeah. they're, it's up there. They blitz a whole lot. Uh, they're terrible. The, no other Ram has over 15 catches, but Cooper has like 45. Like this should just be another game where not like it's different from any other game where Cooper Cup gets 12 to 15 targets, catches 10 balls for a touchdown or two. Um, so I'm going to take Cooper Cup here. Uh, chat is freaking out. They think I have like, think that I have 30 or 70,000 yeah. in salary. I still have to work with 50K guys. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to yeah, make I'm, it I'm happen. I'm very excited. And the, the other note for Cooper Cup is mm -hmm. now the referees are on his team. Oh, if yeah? You caught, if you, well, did you catch the play where Allen Robinson had a walk-in oh, touchdown? Oh, yeah. Yes. And and then the refs were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> uh, we meant to call a whistle. And we know that everyone on the field, everybody played this out. It was a fair play. Mm -hmm. It was already done. Robinson had scored. But we meant to call a medical timeout. So... Throw the ball to yeah. Cooper Cup now, please. Do over. Yeah, Wave we're calling a do over here. No I mean, takesies, backsies. Uh, and this ridiculous. is going to go. You threw it to the right. You clearly meant to throw it to the left. 
Because yes. Cooper Cup's on the left. So do that again, but this time to the left. So All I've right. got Cooper Cup. Look, I've got Dalvin Cook. I've got Cooper Cup. I have two of the best pay-up options, in my opinion, this week. Uh, the For other sure. one that I clearly wanted was your Stefan Diggs. I figured you weren't going to take him, but you took him because you're smart. Uh, so now let's figure out how you're going to cobble together the rest of this lineup. Yeah, I'm going to start here. He is, in fact, he will be, since we're spoiling things, tomorrow is our starts of the week over on the footballers. And to my running back start of the week, he's only $5,500. Oh, yeah, I won't. I won't hit the button, right? But no? that's 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 a big deal over on uh, our show when you when you hit the the number fifty five. Uh, <laughs> that's true. That's but, right. But uh, uh fifty five hundred. I'm going to take Miles Sanders, yeah. who is getting the usage that he deserves. This team looks like an absolute steamroller right now. If they can keep playing that the way that they have, ten percent target share this past week. That's that's not too shabby. I'll mm -hmm. take that as long as you're giving him you know seventy plus percent of the running back attempts, which they did this past week. And against the Manders on the road, I don't think they're good. I know that Carson Wentz has been uh, – I, I call it a, a Winstonian because it reminds me of the Jameis Winston performances from years gone by where he – like they're, they're losing because Carson Wentz is playing bad and then he comes through with big numbers and you're like, oh, well, Carson Wentz is, is good for fantasy football. He's good at football. Like, no, they're, <laughs> they're in the holes because yeah. Carson Wentz is playing like crap. And then he just <laughs> figures it out eventually. But but Miles Sanders is has looked fantastic. And I, I he'll probably get vultured at the goal line by Boston or somebody. That happens. Or he, or Jalen, of course. But at 5,500, I'll take Miles Sanders. I like him a lot this week. Uh, he was in my first look lineup on the week. He still uh, makes people have heartburn anytime that I talk about him. But people are yep. going to have to shift. They've got this mindset, it's this anchor bias from last year where he scored no touchdowns. It's like, well, Miles Sanders is never scoring a touchdown again. Well, it all comes down to usage, guys. And right now, he's getting all the touches on an extremely potent and efficient offense that's going to make maybe the most trips to the red zone this season. Like, they're going to challenge for that title of most trips sure. inside the 10 on the year just based on how many weapons they have offensively. If you get into the scoring zone that often... That running back's going to score some touchdowns, and with the explosive that he has against Washington, who's allowing like what seven yards per carry against, like they just they're a sieve defensively. Okay, I, I love it. I love my Miles Sanders pick, but I I think I maybe could have waited. And now I oh man, there's <laughs> no. a value pick. There's a value pick. I hope. I think I think you're fine there. Okay. okay. I think look, <laughs> there are look. There's value plays out there. There's guys to get. Uh, but look, I you painted me into a corner where I took Cooper Cup. Uh. I don't think I need to go to this guy. I think that there is another player that I need to grab in this spot. Taking a quick look at your lineup. Uh, Sanders digs. I'm gonna yeah. Run mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I need to find a solid value running back. I don't know that there are guys down the price. Like the cheapest one that I'm happy with at the time of recording on, you know, on Wednesday when we record is Miles Sanders. But in that same range, like, I could go up a little bit. Obviously, we we already spoke about Fournette. He's a great value player. Uh, love him, especially if you're building a, a, a balanced type lineup, which it appears that you are building. But I have concerns about that offense right now without Evans, possibly without Godwin. Uh, Julio, who knows if he's ever going to play. Gage is not an alpha. I don't know if the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to be able to move the ball as efficiently as I need them to move the ball. So I'm going to go with Josh Jacobs, who looked really, really good last Ooh. week, got 19 carries. Uh, okay. Obviously, that offense was not very efficient at running the football, uh, but the opportunities are there at 5,400 against Tennessee, who just got throttled by the Bills. Now, the Bills are going to throttle a lot of people, you know. Uh, so I'm looking for as many touches and carries as I can get. Uh, for my flex spot here, I'll lock that up with Josh Jacobs at 5,400, leaving me 4,100. But I do have a defense, uh, which will pump that up just a little bit. All right. All right. I like it. Uh, so the, the value play at the tight end position that I prefer. So mm -hmm. I would, we'll, we'll see. I think there's two. That's why I left that out there. Oh, wait. Hold on. There's hold one on, that's break. clear cut, and then there's another one. They're both in the same range. Hold on. You, you, there's a second one. Eh? The <laughs> second one says you. Uh, whatever. I'm not going to find it. I'm going to go with Big Irv Smith Jr. Mm -hmm. uh, for the Minnesota Vikings, 3,100. He's only there because of the broken thumb uh, situation over the offseason, I would imagine. And and also, uh, not playing football last year, mm -hmm. but even after the week one debacle where he was declared fully healthy, they came out after the game and like, oh, yeah, but we planned to only play him for 30% of the snaps. 
ah, you freaking monsters, man. Like we, we are powering <laughs> your salaries. Let us know. Just stop it with that nonsense. But anyway, so he was back to, you know, being on the field, had the touchdown, should have had a monster, what, 60 yard touchdown, mm-hmm. just barely dropped that. It was a came, the ball came in at a weird angle, but uh, I like him. And now I, now I, I got a couple pieces in case, uh, Detroit, Minnesota turns into the actual shootout. Maybe I get a few tutties out of there. Yeah. So I like this play a lot. Uh, his salary is 3,100. They played on Monday night football and came off of so salaries come out on Sunday night. And so his previous game was, you know, two targets, no, no snaps, all that sort of mm-hmm. thing. So the price was set before this outburst uh, on Monday night football. I would assume that he would be somewhere around 38 or 3,900. So, Yes, he's a value. I usually will get those values on the next slate if that guy explodes on Monday Night Football. So uh, clearly a Monday Night Football pricing issue here. Uh, and look, you should take advantage of that. I'm all for it. I'm going to go. Oh, I'm, I don't need a tight end. He is. Well I, well, I mean, you do by the end of it. Right, but like or, I, I mean, know look, you'd, or maybe if you, you don't. take my tight end in flex, like <laughs> more power to you. <laughs> I was referring to you just not playing the position. Yeah, I'll because just you punt. felt like your team was so dominant. I'll take a punter in that position. <laughs> I'll take the zero. Yeah. So I'm going to go after a quarterback in this spot. I usually don't feel like I have to race to a quarterback because uh, obviously tighter band of scoring, uh, all those sorts of things. I'm going to nab Jalen Hurts. We just talked about how this offense is so great. How are you not out of money? How much <laughs> money do you have left? I have all the money in the world. What is happening? I have all the money in the world. Uh, let's see. 7,600. 7,600. I got Josh. Yeah, I got plenty of money. I got plenty of money. Where is your money coming from? (laughs) The value plays that are remaining. That's where the money's coming from. For sure. Um, trust me. I've got it over here on the other. Every time I look over here, I'm checking the amount of money that I have remaining. Chat's going to freak out. But look, Jalen Hurts, probably the highest floor of any quarterback in a long time. Uh, based on his rushing attempts, right? So, like, if I get six, seven rushing attempts from a quarterback, that's a really good floor. Jalen Hurts is averaged, like, nine and a half. Uh, He's getting us, like, 8.5 to 9.5 points with his legs on average since he was named the starting quarterback at the beginning of last season. Uh, Actually, the last couple games, uh, the season before that. That's before he even throws a pass. Now, with this improved pass-catching uh, you know, cadre of pass catchers that he has with AJ Brown on one side, Devontae Smith running against one-on-one coverage on the other, and Goddard running the short and intermediate stuff out of the tight end spot. And then every once in a while, hey, look, let's have Quez Watkins run a wind sprint and see if we can have him open. There's plenty of options for them to do things. Uh, give me Jalen Hurts. I've got floor, 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 and I'm going to have to make it happen with some value plays, <laughs> obviously. I can't figure out how you're doing this. <laughs> Told you, I get 70 gain salary. Some David Blaine stuff is going to happen <laughs> over there. Okay, so it's it going to be rough. ugly. You're not going to like it. I, I would hope not. It's not going to be ugly. Like, I, it's not going to be roster. pretty. My my value plays are going to be ugly, but there is a reason and a rationalization behind them. Give me your uh, give me your roster real quick so I can. Uh, my roster right now: Jalen Hurts, David Montgomery, Dalvin Cook, Cooper Cup. Okay, so you, oh yeah, so your Josh Jacobs is in your flex. He's in the flex. Okay, so you can't take any more running backs. I am out of running back choices. Mm-hmm. Let's see. So with my team, so I got Miles Sanders, Diggs, Amon Ra, T. Higgins, Irv. So I got 5,100 as my average remaining. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, man. I, <laughs> I have one guy where, like, the salary still doesn't make sense, but I could see a monster game happening this week. So he's interesting. But you you can still take a wide receiver. I can. You, I need you, to take you need wide two, receivers. But you have no cash. I mean, I have some. What's your average remaining? Let's not look. We're not going to wallet shame my lineup at this point, Mike. This is no, not no, the no. place need, for that. I'm I'm not. You do this every week. I don't. I I do not. So what's your average remaining? I have thirteen thousand three hundred left for an average of thirty three hundred and twenty five dollars. Okay. But I do have a defense, so uh, it's a little bit higher. Okay, but so. Okay, so they got like DK Metcalf at 6,100. I do not like the price, mm-hmm. but against the Atlanta Falcons at home, head coach Carroll saying they need to open it up. I, if it, that has like the 
the the ground is fertile for the DK Metcalf <laughs> breakout game. I'm so um, furious at Seattle because I'm, I'm because furious. they're saying all the, I've I've said on the podcast. I'm like they're just they're just trolling Russell yes. Wilson now. That's the whole entire point of what they're doing. They had Russ Wilson for a decade. Yes. One of the and most efficient like, we quarterbacks gotta, in the history of football. We got to open it up. We got Geno Smith. <laughs> now we got Geno. Now we're going to throw the football. All right. Uh, so he's interesting. Drake London at 5,800. But Marcus mm-hmm. Mariota on, in Seattle is – that's a dangerous proposition. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, I mean, oh, pff, screw it, man. Let's get some uh, – I guess I you have guess all you, the money in the world remaining. I know. Well, I was saying, I guess you, you DFF DFSers would call it correlation. I don't know. You guys use real big words that, that, uh, <laughs> that I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not hip to your jargon, man. Uh, but I'm going to go hot. The rookie hot off the 14 target mm-hmm. performance. I will take Garrett Wilson at 5,400 and hope that he continues to be target dominant. And there with, with Higgins and Wilson, maybe I get some, uh, get some juice going there yeah you got a little little uh secondary stack going might be a primary stack by the end of this if that's the route that you wanted to go talk to me about i uh, don't know what i'm doing man <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you do uh I, talk to me about your thoughts on garrett wilson coming into this season so obviously was, we know where he's at now with 22 yeah, targets yeah. after two games but like nobody projected him to be at 22 targets after two games so like what were your thoughts before the season he's somebody you were on then he, he i went on a a roller coaster mm-hmm. with with Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson was uh he before pre so pre-draft, you know, just with my the way that I evaluate things, the way my you know, my model as uh <laughs> the fantasy nice. people like to say. Yeah. Uh I loved Garrett Wilson was my number one guy. And it was like between him and Drake London and so those like those rookie drafts pre-draft, you know, rookie mocks. Mhm. I just I like I want the guy who I know can create for himself. I didn't fully subscribe into Drake London can't get open, but there was a lot of video of him being you know, <laughs> there was a lot of video covered. of him not getting open. Yes. It was <laughs> it's not like all the time, but he was a, a tremendous 50-50 ball guy and it's like with the way that the NFL is going, I preferred the the guy who can separate and create on his own. And they said he would be a really high draft pick. And then he went to the freaking Jets, mm-hmm. and I, uh, I wasn't on Elijah Moore the way that draft Twitter is on Elijah Moore, but I thought he was a sensational player. So the fact that you have one sensational player already, I think that uh, I, I think Wilson's going to be a bust and flame out of the league. So that like that sucked that the guy that I loved went to his team. Who, but but Wilson will be there for at least multiple years, like. They're not going to move on from him after this year, after mm-hmm. next year. I mean, so he's he's stuck with Zach Wilson, and if, and my evaluation is poor. That doesn't. I'm, I'm not saying I'm going to be right on that. Like, hopefully Wilson's fantastic because uh, I want I want every player in the NFL to be good. Yes, like, it's it's a funny thing when people are like ah, why you hate on people? No, I want everyone to be good, mm-hmm. but don't think that he will be. So, anyways, that flip flop Drake London back up to number one for me. Uh, and it was just, it was all over the place. And, but funny enough, I was, I was able to flip, uh, Antonio Gibson in the, our dynasty league into Garrett Wilson. And that felt like a, cause I wanted Elijah Moore for him. So it felt like a, I got the, the secondary option, the one that I didn't really want in Garrett Wilson. And now it looks fantastic. Now, you know, <laughs> now everything knows, looks great. Who knows anything about anything? So, so a great, great, great player. And as long as Joe Flacco is throwing the ball for the next couple of weeks, I feel more secure, and then we're going to have to do a full re-eval once Zach Wilson's back. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm like you. I want everyone to be good. And I, to the point where, like, I give players the benefit of the doubt, because we live in such a society now when it comes to literally everything, but very specifically sports, where if you're not a Hall of Famer and the best player in the history of the, of the, the game at your position, then you're trash. And right, I right. think that there are more stratas than that when it comes to player evaluation. And so like when it comes to quarterbacks, as deep as the quarterback position is now in the NFL, and it's it's truly deeper and more talented than it ever has been. Like I'm on team Tua is actually good. So when I say that, people are like, he's not as good as Patrick Mahomes. No kidding. <laughs> Nobody's as good as him. He's like the best quarterback of all time. So like, no, I'm not comparing him to Josh Allen. No, I'm not comparing him to Patrick Mahomes. And I'm not comparing Zach Wilson to that either, but I kind of think that Zach Wilson 
could be fine. Now, I understand that there is a lot of stuff that, you know, he had the one year, it was a late breakout, he had no pressure on him, all that stuff, great offensive line. This is fodder for another video, but like, uh, I think he can be fine as long as there's good players around him. And uh, I think that Wilson is a good player. I think Elijah Moore is a good player. Uh, so we're going to have to wait and see when he gets back in week four or beyond. Yeah. But good I pick. Mean... I love your team, by the way. Oh, thank you. You have a defense. I have a defense. I don't think the defense is all that important, but I need to save money. And I'm <laughs> yeah, kinda, you do. I'm kind of locked into a spot, not because you can take the guy that I want, but I think that there is a better route. I'm out of your league in money now. Yeah, you, I'm, you're I'm not, Daddy Warbucks. I'm not in the dumpster anymore. No, you're, you're Daddy Warbucks at this point. <laughs> you have like 10K in salary to spend everywhere. Uh, but if I don't get a defense that I want at a specific price that I like, like I could take one, but it puts me on what I feel is a worse player for just $100 more. So I'm going to have to lock up a defense with this pick to get the last couple of players that I'm looking to get. And that leads me to the Jacksonville Jaguars on the road Ooh. in Los Angeles. <laughs> so, Whoa. yes, okay. Okay. I want dropbacks. I want dropbacks, right? Now, the other choice yeah. for me would have been one of the 2,400 defense. We can talk about it afterwards. Uh, the Jaguars defensive line uh, is extremely... Uh, improved from where it was before. I look for two things when I'm drafting a defense, specifically a cheap one, ability to pressure the passer and a team that's going to drop back a lot. The Chargers are not built to be a bully ball, run the football sort of team, run it 40, 50 times a game. They have to drop back and pass. Now, whether that's going to be a very, very encumbered uh, Herbert, you know, the young Prince Justin, uh, I hope that oh, he doesn't get hurt. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. I totally, I, that is the, the ribs had slipped my mind. Yeah. And so that, yeah, if okay, he doesn't go, decent. if he's not able to go, I get to play against Chase Daniel. So I'm no, okay was... with the Jaguars in this spot. Man, <laughs> it's not I... pretty, but it gets me to the rest of the lineup that I kind of want here. I have 36. I... I have about tree fitty left per player. I had, it had totally slipped my mind. Like, where's the news? Why are people not talking about this? Where are, nobody, the, where yeah. are the reporters? We've turned into fantasy football Twitter. Why is nobody talking about Justin Herbert this week? He has a, they said he had what, fractured cartilage in his a ribs? A fractured rib cartilage. And like, so like the two plays that he ran at the end of that game mm -hmm. could not have been more diametrically opposed to one another. Oh, the, so it was the one where he scrambled and it was like, yep. ah! he's like, no. No, no, no man. I can't. Like That's I'm tapping it, and then like he pulled like the Hulkster, where like the, that play had the hand up in the air and it falls to the mat. Second play, uh, hand up in the air, falls to the mat. Next yeah. play, he throws an absolute dot, 50 yards downfield. I it was got ridiculous. this. He started hulking up and he threw that ball to Carter like 50 yards on a dime. So like I don't know what I'm dealing with here yeah, when it comes it was... to Herbert, but they got him. They got him uh, being taken care of by Doctor Stabby Lung this week. So hopefully he oh, does that's... not stab the lung. That's that's great news. Yeah, the, on our Slack, we were all like, take him out of the game. <laughs> Get him out please. of there. And then, oh, oh, okay. He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> He's fine. All right. So I guess, so I can, I can try and buy some time because you have your quarterback. Yeah, you, you can click any... it back to me. I can't take any of the players that you can take. I can't take a running back or a yeah. quarterback. Uh, okay, you, so if you good. need more time, you can just take your defense here or you can take whatever you want. Yeah, I can't so stop what... you anywhere. That's what I am looking at, and I let me just double check. I have that. I have my defense, who I think I'm going with. I'd, okay. I'd prefer to save a few hundred bucks if I could, mm -hmm. but you are. I mean, you took the Jaguars, <laughs> who I would never have taken. <laughs> but <laughs> like, I like pressure, and I like teams that have to drop back. Like that's that's how you score on defense. Like playing the, against a team that drops back twelve times is never going to help me. So like. I need to uh, gamble that there's going to be some interceptions and possibly a touchdown or some sacks. The I'll tell you the, the wild card DFS uh, DST here of the week would be the Arizona Cardinals at home for just 2,400, mm -hmm. and they did trounce the Rams once last year. Like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm a Cardinal fan. I'm not optimistic about the team, but they do have weeks. They and they will have weeks throughout the season where they just show up, mm -hmm. and that that could turn into some bad news here for the Rams oh, struggling man. on the offensive line are the Rams. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to save a couple. Cause I was, I was thinking about going with the Panthers against uh broken back. James Winston, mm -hmm. who uh, was just serving. I saw someone call him what they, 
uh, everything was being made about uh, Olave's air yards, and they they were like, no, those are those are prayer yards because <laughs> they were not even close. It's just Winston throwing the ball really high and really far. I thought that was a that was very funny. I'm going. It with was the an impressive three hundred plus though. Yes, I, I believe I had heard it was the third most of all time ever. Yeah, since for, the stat uh, has been recorded according to next gen stats. Mm-hmm. I'm going Cardinals at twenty four hundred. Let's let's go. You got to do it for the brand. Home team. You got to do it for the brand. Well, the, my brand right now is hating on the Cardinals. <laughs> he says wearing a Phoenix Suns hat. So the yeah, other team Suns, that I was going to go with there would have been the Jets, the the movable object that is the, de- sure. the Jets' defensive line, just praying that Cincinnati's offensive line can't keep him off and getting a bunch of sacks, uh, even yeah, though the I Jets are bad at getting pressure. Uh, I needed to save that $100. Uh, <laughs> it, this is where it's going to get ugly. brutal. <laughs> I'm going to take the less ugly pick first. Okay. Okay, I'm going to take the less ugly pick first. So you can get the terrible one and just shut the stream and down. And then just rip the Band-Aid <laughs> off and end the video. So the less ugly pick is at tight end, okay? Uh, the value pick that I liked would be Juwan Johnson for New Orleans, but the quarterback situation is a problem. He's only 2,900, right. running a ton of routes, uh, all those sorts of things. I want... I had to make a... Uh, I had to stand up for statistics on the podcast last week, and I had to make a uh, Juwan versus Taysom Hill bet. Oh, you had to win that one, yeah. Yeah, well, I yes, yeah. of course he I won. Because, like, because he's just going to run the ball four times a game, and so I'll take the guy that gets targets. Yeah, and everyone was starstruck. Yes, I get it. He had a huge 60-yard touchdown run the first week, mm-hmm. but that was it. And and so I, I stood up for math, and I planted my flag, and it was fantastic. And I felt I was like, that's right. That's, that's how low of a level of tight end I will go to before I play Taysom Hill. Can you get, like, what you needed to do, this is, again, hindsight being 2020, you needed to get your art department to Photoshop the back of your head onto Jon Snow pulling the sword out <laughs> as the horses rush him? That would have been the play on social, but, you know. Twitter, <laughs> like, and, and of course, Taysom Hill's first carry is a 15-yard yeah, and everybody's wide open roasting up the you. middle, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, and then uh, Twitter <laughs> let me know. Yep. And like, He's about to eat, and then... He only lost yards after that. Yeah. Twitter lets you know when you're wrong immediately. Yeah. They're, uh, the, the Foot Clan is pretty good. They let they let us know when we're right, too. We there all you celebrate go. together. It's very, it's very civil over there in Arizona. I'm going to go oh. with Evan Ingram. Uh, in spite of his horrible... That was, that was my... If I was going to pay a little bit more, yeah. that was my dude. So, in spite of his horrible headshot here, uh, I'm going to pick... He looks like the Night King. Spe- staying with the Game of Thrones references... That's dope. This is it. <laughs> Can we get him like a crown? Somebody make his skin look a little like light blue, like icy. It's it's not great, but like I love the way that they're utilizing it. Eight targets in week two, four targets in week one. Uh, running routes per drop back at an elite rate, like 82% last week. They are using him way different than he was used uh, when he was on the Giants. And this is how you want him used. He is not to be used as a blocker, and he is not to be used uh, on like... Darren Waller routes inside of five yards of the line. So you got to let him get out there and roam. He wants to run. So let him run against linebackers and safeties and really take advantage uh, of the advantage that he has over them. So 3,700, I'll plug him in. I have a very robust $3,650 remaining for two Ooh. wide receivers. I'm going to nail it. I uh, My favorite Ingram stat right now is on the season, he has 92% of his target. Four for four in mm-hmm. week one, seven of eight week two, like, <laughs> Look, look at you, Evan, catching those passes. I mean, look, Trevor Lawrence has been ridiculously uh, solid. So far. Like, ridiculously solid, Ridic- if that's the thing. <laughs> he completed 25 of 30 passes last week. That he just doesn't happen. Just incredibly average. Yes, he's way better than average at this point. He's like the 14th best QB in the league. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now, what, man. Running back and quarterback, you have 12,600. Yeah. Dollars. I got, I got, I got twelve six. I was really, really. I'm looking at the bottom of these running backs because I was like, can I sneak Josh Allen into this lineup? Which I could. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, I have to completely punt my RB two off of a bridge. Oh, I dude. thought that if I thought you were going to go much cheaper uh, than Wilson, which would have put you onto Allen there. Yeah, I should have. Like I said, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm you got a really gonna, good roster. I'm not I'm seeing how you should be complaining through. in this spot. Um. Okay, so no, oh, so at the, let's see what what running backs we even talk about here. So James Cook, Algier, maybe, maybe. Uh, oh, we're really dumpster diving. I'm just saying, like if I I put Allen in just to see what 
who was el even eligible for my roster at that ah, point. Ah, I see. Let me let me let me let me do this with you then. You okay. have 4400 and that yep. would take us to the running back position. And so chat can can go through this with you. There you go. James Cook, Michelle, Algier, Mike Davis. Oh, I mean Davis is out. Like Cook <laughs> maybe. I mean probably not. Tyler Algier. I'd go Algier before I went James Cook. I know he cleaned up last week. Yeah, there's but, nothing down here. Yeah, I don't I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. That's unfortunate. That's all right. All right. Well, we'll back Josh Allen out of there. Mm -hmm. um, what's he? Wait, oh, so he's eighty two hundred. Oh man. All right. I'll just. I don't. <laughs> oh man. I, I have my my backup option, but but if the people in stream are enjoying the stream, I don't want to deprive them of of. People this. love seeing uh, me or the opponent sweat. <laughs> Whenever it comes to the case, like anytime, so like sure. when you snipe me for digs, people go, "Ha ha! I took digs! Ha! I got him!" All right. Oh. Now see. The running back that I want to go with, mm -hmm. if my my, it's I'm perfectly priced into Jalen Hurts, and that is that's upsetting. Yeah, that, that's upsetting. Mm -hmm. Uh, whatever. So we'll do that first, and then we'll figure out the quarterback. All right. So who you got a uh, running back? I'm gonna go with Damian Pierce. Okay. At, at five thousand, I know he's probably not gonna catch any passes, but Houston taking on Chicago, the the Bears. I mean, uh, what would just what I don't even what is the correct verbiage or Bad. adjective Bad. for for what happened to them this past uh, weekend they got swaled Ooh, yeah i've never even heard that word yeah so that, that's a I college word that. for me with my friends i was uh i was the the two-time back-to-back syracuse singles and doubles racquetball intramural champion uh and i would okay. carry my roommates in doubles because i had no doubles partner so like one time my roommate was not paying attention it was my hit in doubles and i watched the ball come off the back wall and i hit it as hard as I could and he was backing up to me like this oh no! and I swaled him across the back with my racket <laughs> so you were a racquetball man I was a racquetball man in college I am now 49 years old and the furthest thing from a racquetball man yeah but have you gotten into the pickleball so we have a little pickleball net in the backyard my kids like playing but I've never played seriously and I would like to I would like to, to play around with it a little bit yes we uh you we guys are, are like like Andy's like yeah. winning tournaments and stuff yeah, he's we're like all... professional we're we're not pros, but we are we're pretty serious players. We're we're uh, if you are familiar with the sport, we're we're pretty much four O players. See, I have no point. idea. I have no idea about the sport. I've never played on a real court. I would like to bop around a little bit and learn. It's really good, and it doesn't matter how old you are because there's mm -hmm. there's play styles for every yes. range of athleticism. It's a really good sport. So, uh, but anyways, Damian Pierce against the Bears, who were just dominated. Lovey Smith said we need to get Damian Pierce the ball more. After the weird, weird Rex Burkhead. Usage After the Rex one. Burkhead week, yeah. And Rex Burkhead did not carry the ball. Lovey Smith was a man of his word, true to true to that. So I think that Houston. I mean, no matter what happens, Chicago is not going to be blowing out the Houston Texans. They maybe they win, but they'll still. Both teams are going to is have it fully established by the the end. So it'll be interesting. Your Montgomery versus my Damian Pierce. You know, that's that's true. One of us will win. Two men will enter. Only one man will leave. Why don't you pick your quarterback so that I can rip off the Band-Aid when it comes back to me? <laughs> you can't have okay. Jalen Hurts. All right. Um, and and now that we are remembering Herbert's injury, I'm kind of freaked out by that. Mm -hmm. uh, now, there is the caveat. If a player is deemed out, because we draft on Wednesday. So if yeah. Herbert is out and you pick him here, you can sub him out. Oh, but the problem is I think he will play. Aha. But, I mean, he's going to be uh, on the feeling good juice. Mm -hmm. But how long does – How long uh, does like, the it, juice last? Yeah, and, like, does one shot take him out of the – like, not not that shot, the shot from the, d the yes. defensive people mm -hmm. onto the ground. Does that take him out of the game? So that freaks <laughs> onto, me out a little Onto bit. the ground. Yes. A shot from the ground is not happy juice. No. Like, they, they will be putting into his ribs. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Kyler Murray, do I for the brand? He was he's so he's been so bad for half of each game. Yeah, I don't know what is going on, but he's been not just, ladies and gentlemen, he's not just not putting up points. He's been dreadful. Yeah, for for a bad for at least a half of each of the first two games. Mm -hmm. I mean, his what is his his number one guy is Dorch. It's not Hollywood Brown. We do not speak ill of Greg Dorch in this oh. house. We're the, the Dorch is is big stuff over here. Trust yeah. me, we all we all like the Dorch. Uh, 
I am going okay, – let's – which quarterback do I just want to stack with? That's what that's what we'll go with. I'm not going Kyler. You're not going to go Kyler? It's I'm strange because not... he's had bad first half, but in the second half of every game, he has answered the call of duty. I see what you did. <laughs> I also feel like you're trying to bait me. It Was that just for the joke, or are you trying to bait me into getting Kyler Murray? No, it was just for the joke. I'm here uh, for all call of duty jokes with Kyler. The Someone had said some beta came out this weekend. Yeah, the call of duty verify. beta, open beta. Was, is that true? Yeah. Dude. I mean, <laughs> Week one, there was a double XP weekend. At what point <laughs> is it not just a funny joke anymore where you're like, it happens too much yes. for it to not be true? Did you see that on Twitter, somebody on Fantasy Football Twitter did an, uh, an entire graph yes. expose with, with plot graphs on double XP weekends versus Kyler's fantasy output? Yep. I, yeah. Yep. And, and when, there was a lot drops. of correlation. Not saying that correlation equals causation, but it's close. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. At what point does that, does that get uh, blurred over? <laughs> oh gosh so who are we going with okay so going I mean, jared goff so it's either well i i guess he can be in the mix too i was i was looking at it's either kyler if i want no stack mm -hmm. burrow if i want my higgins stack cousins if i want my irv stack mm -hmm. wow oh, all right for the brand i'll go kyler murray <laughs> so kyler great, it but, is but i'll go kyler all right open beta and i'm just gonna i got 300 extra dollars i'm just gonna burn that out I'm going to burn that in your face. <laughs> it's just, I'm just going to keep, I'm just going to hang on yeah. to that because I can't have it. Kyler Murray, Miles Sanders, Damian Pierce, Amon Ross St. Brown, T. Higgins, Steph Diggs, uh, Smith Jr., Wilson, and the Cardinals defense. That is a very formidable lineup. Coming back over to me, I'm going to rip the Band-Aid off and I'm going to do it. The, the first one's ugly, chat. I'm letting you know it's really ugly, uh, but it's going to be Mac Hollins. Great oh. hair, though. Like oh, Troy Polamalu-esque hair. His hair game is elite. Solid. Really good hair game. Eight targets last week, 3,300 on DraftKings. Uh, running a lot of routes, playing a lot of snaps currently uh, for the Raiders. Opposite Devontae Adams. Uh, oh, real and, Trey is right. If Ren, Renfro might be out. Yeah, Renfro might be out. Uh, look, if he's in, it's kind of, it's a wash. I'm hoping for like, Four catches for 38 yards from Mac Hollins. Anything above that is profit, which leaves me with 4K. Uh, and like this is this is the problem. Okay, this is the problem. Is this range? Uh, I am thinking that the Jaguars should theoretically be playing from behind in this spot. I could easily go with the safety blanket and go with Zay Jones, but I have Ingram and I'm not going to stack two of them. Uh, which means that I'm going to go with Ashton Doolin as oh. my second value play here. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, At 3,900, yeah, solid usage the first two weeks with 13 targets, six in week one, seven in week two. It's ugly. It's effective uh, because in the games where uh, Pitt, in the game where Pittman played, Doolin still ran a good amount of routes, got six targets in that game. They should be playing from behind a lot. Great passing situations for them. Matt Ryan's going to have to throw the ball. Kansas City's defense, not as strong. Definitely a carnival spot. If I can get 10 fantasy points out of him, it's a win. If I get eight, I'm fine. I have to ride with the studs going full stars and scrubs with Jalen Hurts, Montgomery, Cook, Cooper Cup, Hollins, Doolin, that Ingram, Josh Jacobs, and the Jaguars D. Thanks for watching. Look out for another video right there. He's a legend.